Jackson Harley Flavor Podcast. Your boy, Young Ty. And you know, today we got a very, very, very special guest. You see me? My next guest. It's got more bars than the motherfucking U.S. Treasury. You dig me? More bars than the county jail. Can you feel me? MC, MC, and actor, Do Detroit. You see me? Welcome to the podcast, my brother. Welcome to the podcast, my brother. Humbly appreciate it. Yes, bro. Put yeah. some respect on it, baby. Put bread. some respect on it. Put some chili cheese you up on it, baby. Know. Put some chili Swiss cheese, cheese oh, if you please, baby. What's <laughs> Yo, good, brother? man? What, what up, though? Yo, welcome to the podcast. What up, though? What Nick? up, though? What yeah, up? I already know. What's good? Yo, man. Doe Detroit. What up, though? Been though? trying to get you in the kiosk. I feel like I'm at the house, man. Appreciate You're finally here. You're finally here, bro. I really appreciate it, my You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Let's get this thing Rolling. What you want to know? What you want to know? My brother. So originally, obviously, you're from Detroit, right? Born and raised. You know that's a cultural center. It's a cultural hub. What was it like growing up in Detroit, man? Man, growing up in Detroit, man. What was it like? Um, man, it was so many facets growing up in Detroit. You got the, like you said, the music, the mold town. You know, not mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. Motown, the the cars. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The Motor City. So we got the music and the, the cars, and obviously a little bit of danger. But you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Growing up in Detroit was amazing, man. Like I said, I got to go to Hitsville, um, USA. Growing up, see all the artists that came out of Detroit. Sure. And you know, just 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 the musical, a big musical extravaganza, man, of the best musicians that I ever walked on earth. <laughs> That cares about sin, man. That goes without sin. <laughs> that cares about sin, man. <sighs> At what age did you, like, you, you realize you could actually spit? Like, you knew that you had something going on? Man, what age should I think that I could rap, man? Um, Man, to be honest, I used to play around with, with, with one of my favorite cousins, T-Max. Shout out T. Mac. Yo, big up T Mac. And Detroit, big up man. T-Mac. And, uh, like a brother of mine's man, we used to listen to Bone Thugs and Harmony and and and, and memorize the words f- front to back. I mean, mm-hmm. front to back, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Everybody, I mean, front to back. And learning all those words and the, they fast cadence and mm-hmm. Twister and all these different artists that I listened to when I was young. I actually picked up a pen maybe like. 14, 15, man. And I think I was pretty decent. Like, I had a lot of people thinking I was decent. I, I was lacking the confidence in myself. Right. That's what I think. How did you, uh, like, how did you build up that confidence? Because I knew exactly what you're talking about. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, everybody else felt I had it more than I did. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I wasn't comfortable on the mic. I know at that better. Time. I know, I know better than you. You, yeah. you know, bro. Yeah, so I wasn't comfortable on the mic that time. I think I, I ain't record my first song till maybe I was like shit, 18, 19 years old, 20 years old. Madness. Um so I was messing with music for a while before I even jumped in the booth. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? And like I said, man, um I knew I had something, man. I knew I had something. Yeah. But like I said, the public knew I had it more than I did. It wasn't until I actually realized it and tuned in to myself. So that's what actually made you click in, tap in yeah. within yourself. I yeah? tapped in. Yeah, I really tapped in even more than what a lot of people here know because I don't boast on nothing that I did. So unless you really know me, you wouldn't know much about me because I don't brag on the accomplishments or the different plateaus that I've crossed, you know? That's what I, you know, that's what I, that's what the people that's good at the craft usually, man, humbly, they usually like that, you know what I mean? Humbly appreciate it, bro. Y'all always show love, man. Uh, of I course, of course. How can you not show love, though? Man, you know what real. I mean? Hey, <laughs> hey. How can you not show love? Hey, that's a very important question, man, uh-huh. because you know when you got a talent, a real talent mm-hmm. that people recognize you as a threat talent, that's when strangers make you rich. You know, it be say that shit again, be, man. The strangers huh. are sprinkling who make you rich because Gems. you will have some homeboys that love you. Yeah, I mean, outside of your talent, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. they really love you. But when it comes to supporting you and actually 
you know, giving you your props, they won't. And I had to re remember, you know, one thing I want everybody to remember that, you know, don't judge your talent based on the applause because they won't clap because you burning shit up. You know, that's one of the reasons why they won't clap. And people don't understand that, you know, it's a lot of people that don't really understand that they jealous as a motherfucker or envious or spiteful of somebody else's talent or facts so to speak success you know huge facts man huge facts so speaking on that your writing process man your writing process do you prefer you know what i mean i know there's a bunch of different ways you could write mm -hmm. but do you prefer being in the studio around all the vibes you know some people like to set a certain vibe in the studio they like a lot of people there they, they like uh almost a performance when they're in the studio mm -hmm. or are you more like a solitary writer you like to you know get in your thoughts dig in deep walk um i take my writing personal you know what i mean and the reason why i take it personal is because i could really give you real life experiences of the wrong shit that I got. Yeah. You know, and I consciously made a decision to give game instead yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you know, knowing what's wrong, instead of knowing what's wrong, you know, and actually giving you what's wrong and knowing that I know that's wrong, I feel bad. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I actually consciously switched up a lot of my music because if you hear me 10 years ago, it was, I sound just like them now. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But let me, right let me interrupt you right quick. Do you Don't feel me. like back then you had a different mindset or, or what What changed you, man? Oh, what changed you? Man, what changed me? And we'll get back to the the writing um, environments too because I want to touch on that. Yeah, because you took, you, you took it into another level. Yeah, but a beautiful see, level, you dig me? What changed it was, you know, I've got into some traumatic, traumatic experiences that actually firsthand taught me that the shit that I was telling these young boys was cool yeah. wasn't cool. You know what I'm saying? And I was there, yeah. it, 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 the bright lights will fool you. You know what I mean? They make you think Facts. some things that Facts. aren't really relevant or prevalent and they'll trick you into thinking that shit is cool. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Well, me having a son and you know wanting the best for my son just because I had a certain part or a certain streak of my life, I want my son to be as straight and narrow as possible. Yeah, you know what I'm course, saying? So I know how impressionable, impressionable these kids are, the youth are. Of you know? course, of course. They'll listen to a, a song about hitting a lick or shooting something up and go pick up a 30 and shoot something up. And when I'm seeing these kids, like if you ever see when they first get in trouble, It'll fuck you up because the same motherfucker that was out there toting them 30s and doing them shootouts and doing them drive-bys, it was a mess. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I see how impressionable they are, just to wrap it up, you know, I don't want to give them the impression that the streets and the dope money and the, the guns and that life. And even though I grew up in that environment firsthand and was able to, you know, duck and dodge the certain trap set for me. I don't think they're smart enough to do it now because they're actually raised by the internet. Some of these kids are raised Man. by the streets. Thank you, you know what thank I'm saying? You. Thank you for touching. I had to that. change up my writing content and yeah. touch on the the content is personal to me because you know out here we ride bikes. I've been riding cars since 12, 13. In this yeah. place, but here we ride bikes. And here, bike know, life, Bermuda bike, bike life. Bermuda you know, bike, and they got some serious riders. They got some, hey, sleep Bermuda's got Bermuda. riders. Please don't sleep. Shout on out Bermuda. to all the riders. Please really? don't sleep on Bermuda. They be popping oh. willies in front of me. I just tape them like these boys is bad. <laughs> Send it back. And home. That's my guys go crazy. And that's a fact. But I write most of my music either traveling in my car or on a bike. That's all my man. ideas come into my head, and soon as they do, I pull over. Yeah, to a bus stop or somewhere. And I vocally spit it. Yeah, yeah. Because one of my biggest things is, and I know some artists can understand me, is if you spit some hot shit in the morning and you got the cadence and everything down is in the mate, it's amazing. By lunch, you forget the cadence of how you said it. Fact. It ain't about what you said. That's it's the fact. way you say it that make it good. Like, mm -hmm. it's some, I'm going to be honest, I'm so humble. But it's some horrible fucking rappers out there. But the, their vernacular. In the uh -huh. way they say it, 
in the way they do it. You know what I'm saying? It's dope. Uh -huh. And uh, like one of my favorite favorite new guys, you know, Moneybag. Now Moneybag's okay. not a okay. bad rapper. Moneybag is talking a lot of more better shit than a lot of these guys that that's out here rapping. But it's subjective. His but yeah. vernacular, subjective. subjective. But the subjective. way he give it to you, the delivery and the cadence, you know, with the Memphis twang. You know, with something about it that make you too neat. Purple her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you, you know can, what I mean? You can have a guy from Detroit say the same lyrics as Moneybag and you, it won't hit the same. I and see you can it, have Moneybag rap some Detroit artist lyrics mm -hmm. and it won't hit the same. Exactly, so that vernacular yeah. and them cadence and where you from and your accent, it makes a big deal to me, you know, but- Factual. Yeah, so not like I said, not to uh, take the writing process over, not to take the writing process, uh, you know, take it too far. Yeah. But I like to write most of my stuff by myself because I'm a thinker and not only that the studio with that environment that you see on TV it involves a lot of distractions so if you got ass walking around and you got people smoking and you got people drunk and you got somebody every time you got somebody drinking you got somebody to get a little too drunk or having mm -hmm. too much fun and he belligerent and I'm watching him and I'm kind of the I'm the watcher you know I'll be in the party and done um how can you do it you know i went to school for sociology and, and studying people so i'm actually studying everything i'm studying you know who would be cool and who would be a yeah. threat and who drunk and who this and it actually takes my mind off the music because i'm trying to you know i'm trying to study the people that's around me because not many people are around me, you know and, and, it's, it's almost as if like everything's taken away from your it's attention taken away because, from the essence because yeah. you want to focus on so many different things like a, a young lady might be dressed nice or you yeah. know somebody in the studio might be too loud or somebody might be wrong or they might bring up a topic like i was in the studio maybe two weeks ago when somebody brought up COVID and fucked my whole session up you know because we got to talk about COVID for 17 hours you know what i'm saying and that's how it goes though and when people bring up different topics oh did you see such as a, the football game or the basketball game or this move or that you know i cut out all that by recording by myself you know i go in that bitch an empty studio with all these words written because you know i go record songs with no paper yeah no pad but the shit that i'm really passionate about just let that shit pour out i let that shit pour let out i got pour, so many scars man. and shit that i got on me that you will never see because what can you help me with? exactly you, know, you won't know my scars i won't tell you because what you gonna do for me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, gonna do for me? you know what I mean? And so, that's a fact. That's, that's it, a bro. fact. But I want to go back to the point that you made because you know a lot of people they like to make the you know the gangster stuff seem cool and all that type of <laughs> all that type of stuff. And if you know, you know, you know what I mean. You basically said everything. You know what I mean? Without incriminating yourself, you know what the life is, right? Exactly. You see me? We can leave it at that. You see? And we can leave it at that. But, you know, you can even touch on a few, a, a two minutes. You know, that it's not rocket science that everybody is not built for that life. Factual. You know? And Factual. I'm not built for that life. As far as willing to sacrifice my freedom for somebody else to be shit. You know what Man. I'm saying? I would never tell on the soul in my life, but I won't put myself in a position to go do a drive-by with X, Y, Z. Go jams, sell jams, jams, X, Y, Z. Jams, 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 because jams. a lot of these situations y'all get in or we get in as a culture or we get in as a people, we always get in, a lot of these times we get into it with somebody else. And even if you stand by the code, if you got three people, if you, got, if you do a crime with two people, and this is how I'm going to leave it, this is the best way I can explain it. If you do a crime with two other people, one of them two other people gonna tell on you. It's statistically proven, it's life proven, and that's it's fact. world proven. If you are not doing your shit by yourself, you are gonna lose because eventually the heat is gonna get too hot. You know, and that we gonna leave it like that. I ain't gotta touch on that. Nobody else done. Man. The odds are against you, man. The police gotta win. You got just think about getting lucky every day. What's the biggest gang in the world? Police. The man, come on. Is I think the government. The I think the government. Babylon. And then Babylon. Because yeah. the government gives them their powers. You know what I'm saying? And that's and, big facts. You know, the police is, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, is, a, is the public relations with us and the police force is not the best. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And they mm -hmm. know why. And, we, and the people, real people know why. You know? Facts. Dope. What up, dog? What up, though? What up, though? What's something 
that people get wrong about Detroit, brother? Um, Detroit speaking the speaking city. to the mic for me, my yeah, brother. Detroit the city. So, a big misconception about Detroit the city is that it's dirty, not well kept, just straight. As soon as you get to the city, it's not like that. You know, you 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 got when you from Detroit, and if you know somebody from Detroit, they can give you the game in less than 10 minutes of how to survive in Detroit. Yeah. You know, and it's not that hard. You know? So let me ask you another question. Is it is it not like if you're not from there, don't go there, say you're from the east, west, north, south. I don't know Detroit like that. Mm-hmm. If you're not from a certain area, can you still go there? Can you still, you know, um, have a good time or you got to be on your P's So and that's Q's. what I meant by if you from Detroit, you can give somebody a 15 minute synopsis or a 15 minute, you know, um, explanation of how to survive in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And that's one of them there of how to survive in the United States. You can look on the United States map got thousands of cities um, obviously about 50 states but there's so many cities that you would have to use the same protocols coming to Detroit so I'll give you an example Manhattan which is you know a board, like the middle of New York City right right you can go certain places in Times Square and be okay. Facts. But you can dip down 42nd, 47th, and be somewhere where you don't. She gets grimy, yes, yes. So, pretty much, the only places I think in the U.S. where you can go and blend in is the Las Vegas Strip. <laughs> Big facts. <laughs> and Atlanta. Mm. And that's no diss to Atlanta. But you can be from almost anywhere and go to Atlanta and kind of blend in because they let it get so overpopulated with people. Well, it should. It's, it's, it's a black marker, you know well, what I mean? You got so many it's people a black from, marker. from so many different places in Atlanta that mm-hmm. that's one of the only places where you can actually go reside in a city so big and populated. Mm-hmm. And actually blend in, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. everybody ain't shout it, shout it. Everybody ain't like that in Atlanta. You know, you got all walks of life. People from everywhere almost seem like they can migrate to Atlanta and be okay. Like Miami, yeah. you got South Beach. And you got some places on South Beach where you can't go. You seeing it's getting it's getting bad, man. Yeah, you know, South Beach is well right you, now, bro. You know, people are hurting. COVID <laughs> to knock jobs out. And it seemed like the Jack Boys done been. They all put in applications. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and they yeah. everywhere. They Trust out me, there. So. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the, hey, shout out to these Zeus. Man, shout, shout out to them. The, hey. hey, don't go to Miami if you don't, man. Don't go talk about no Sapase. Nah. Uh, Naboule, if you don't, ain't from there, you don't go out there. Don't, don't start doing all that because them Haitians know you ain't from there. And I love them. Shout out to Haiti because Haiti got a lot of different things going on right now. Big shouts out to Haiti. Haiti is having it bad, really, at the borders of the United States. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that we don't some, talk hey, about. Some crazy stuff going on yeah, right now. So at shout the out border, to Haiti, man. man. You know, you know what I mean? the Border Patrol number one. Man, whoa, Border Patrol doing some nasty you know things. If you're crazy not stuff looking right at now. it, go check it out because segregation, modern day segregation in front of your face. You got Fashion. people on, you got, um, Men on horses whipping Haitians whipping at the people, border. Man. You saw that, right? Whips, but we're not gonna go into that. We're nah, gonna take we that, we gonna, hey, pay we gonna attention to what's going on because it's more than ass shaking and bottle popping and guns popping and blasting going on in the world. You know what I mean? Real talk, but we're gonna real. bring you back into a positive space, baby. Let's do that. Yo, what up, dog? Yo, Wild One. Sign it. I wanna hear something from you, man. Can you do that for me? Can you do that for the blessing, holly flavored podcast? What? Bless. This is something we do. Yeah, here we go. A new single of mine. World premiere, world premiere. Blessing Holly Flavor Podcast. 
Videos already shot two weeks ago. Talk that shit. And we gonna give you something. Talk that shit. Look. Look. Yeah. Also, thank you for the wake up. Taught me I had to eat all my veggies before I cake up. Taught me that anybody can miss it, even the layup. Cause life is like the neighborhood barbers, you better shape up. Never know what's coming your way. Maybe a pay cut. I know how much that y'all love money. You seen the breakup? Always in the rush to blow up so you can stunt. But your growth is the only thing stunting. Ain't no discussion. I'm giving out a life full of game, but y'all won't listen. Rather hear me rap about killing, popping prescriptions. Rather hear me dissing our women, I'ma uplift them. Hope they do this. Same in return, we both victims Gotta heal to clean up your soul from old symptoms Or you gon' hurt the people you love, it's evolution I still got some growing to do, so don't confuse me With some goody two-shoes dude, there's still bruises I was always bumping my head, still foolish The only resolution to this, switch movements Had to put a plan in motion, I was clueless Life ain't really easy at all, but it's ruthless Get it? Easy? Ruthless? <laughs> Y'all don't get it, man they don't get it. Man, I had to give you a little first verse, you know what I'm saying? A verse <laughs> off this thank you, Lord. I'm going to give you some anticipation for when it actually dropped this week. It's dropping on the ground. Doe underscore so underscore Detroit. That's Doe so Detroit with the underscores in the middle. And you know what I'm saying? I wanted to give you that verse because, like I said, I could talk about so many different topics and so much dumb shit that I've seen. And, and been around mm -hmm. and been able to actually articulate. And I would have dropped the whole track for you. But like I said, I want to leave some anticipation for next week. That's Doe underscore so under, underscore Detroit. So you can kind of see where I'm going with my music. You know what I'm saying? That's on Instagram. No curse words in that track. Mm -hmm. I ain't killed one person. I ain't sold a brick. I ain't mm -hmm. fuck nothing. Ain't no ass shaking a straight game. Giving y'all something that you can use for the future. Check but it I out. tell you one thing, he is fucking. He fucking up the game, baby. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what up, though? That's an early flavor podcast, baby. Humbly appreciate it. Dude. What up, though? Yo. Thank you for coming true, man, brother. I appreciate for real, for real. I appreciate real. the platform. Thank you, like bro. Y'all, y'all, I really fuck with y'all character off the camera, man. And, Yo, and that's one. Thank you, man. Thank you. Know, you. Appreciate you. And that being said, follow us, like us, subscribe on YouTube, IGTV, baby. That's an highly flavored podcast. Yeah, boy. Young Ty. Young. No. Detroit. Dope. Check me later. Boom.